Shut it, man! Patreon Punch to the Gut Squad, welcome to your additional Jab to the Jaw, a Patreon exclusive. I'm trying to do these things monthly, but I know I suck sometimes. Sorry about that, but the Hawk loves you all. Today's video will not be a Ring of the Hawk video, as there are just not enough matches to grade on this one. Instead, what I'll give you is an overview. Pre-warning before you watch this one, if you hate slap nuts or WCW wrestlers, this probably won't be the video for you. I'd like to thank JJ, Tohill, Rogers and Duffy is back for requesting today's video. If it sucks, blame those two guys. Okay, let's get into it. Lex Luger and TNA, did he make the Hawk spray? It all starts with slap nuts, as most things do in TNA. He's in the middle of challenging for a second world title reign at this point. TNA was in the process of trying to bring the Hawkster into TNA, and Jeff even went as far as going to Japan and smacking him with a guitar. They did manage to get his manager though, Jimmy Hart, and he came in to cut a promo and clear up the situation. Jimmy Hart tells a complete lie to the crowd and tells them that Hulk Hogan has officially signed with TNA. He also says that Hulk Hogan would be facing Jarrett on pay-per-view at Bound for Glory. Predictably, they move on to talking about the incident between Jarrett and Hogan at Bash of the Beach 2000. TNA is continuously obsessed with the past. Jarrett tells Hart not to bring up the incident ever again. The whole promo makes it sound like it was down to Jeff Jarrett when we all know it was Hulk Hogan using his creative control. Slappy beats Jimmy Hart up to start a feud between the two. AJ Styles eventually runs Jarrett off. Later that night, AJ lost his world title to Slapnuts to start his second world title reign. I can feel the sick in my beak. After the match, Jeff says nobody will ever be able to take the belt back now and for some reason he name drops Macho Man and Sting. Jim interrupts him and says he's going to bring someone to get his revenge. TNA spend a lot of time and effort building up to this mystery reveal. They actually paid for a stretch hummer. They probably gave David Young food stamps around this time, and he'd need a lot of them. Jimmy didn't want to reveal who the mystery man is, but it was hyped up to mad levels throughout the show. TNA would have a lot of special reveal fails over the years. They would hype these things up to unbelievable levels and then disappoint the TNA fans time and time again. This was probably the first ever example of that, as the secret man was revealed to be... Hacksaw Jim Duggan. It wasn't even like this was a big deal, as Hacksaw had already appeared in TNA once before. The crowd fell flat with disappointment. After a short bad match, Jarrett smacked him over the head with his guitar. Nobody cared about this either. It didn't even break properly. After the match, Jimmy Hart revealed that he isn't done and a new WCW man rushed the ring. This is Rick Steiner. They had a match following straight after the Hacksaw one and Jarrett also smashed him with a guitar. Hart said he wasn't done and next week Jarrett will face Sting. He also teased possibly even more wrestlers from the past. Anyway, TNA did actually come through with their promise of Sting, but no Hawkstra unfortunately. TNA would have to wait another that, 7 years for that Smackdown one. Gets the, the next week, Sting has the match won until Jarrett's goon squad get involved. Slappy was unable to use his guitar on Sting as it has no effect on Steve Borden. Sting says he's going to stick around in TNA. He also said he will team up with AJ next week. Jarrett accepts that offer of a tag match and reveals that his tag team partner would be the total package Lex Luger, a man who couldn't wait to show up in TNA. They're still banging on about the match at Bash of the Beach 2000. Now Sting wants to know why Jeff Jarrett did it. Hart even has a stupid Y t-shirt on. It's definitely not as good as the new Slap Nuts tee. AJ Styles says he's not sweating Lex Luger as he isn't on his level. Jarrett is still hyping up Hulk Hogan asking where he's gone. He doesn't seem that bothered about Lex Luger or Sting being in TNA. The crowd heavily boo when Lex's name is finally mentioned on the show. Jarrett says Lex is going to prove that AJ Styles is not on their level. Now let's get to the reason we're all here. The one and only match of Lex Luger in TNA and the final televised match of his career. Sting and AJ Styles versus Slapnuts and Lex Luger. He has a pretty sweet guitar rift as his entrance music. He's got a personalised gown and he still looks to be in great shape. His hair is starting to slide down the back of his neck though unfortunately. Before the match Luger has hold of the mic. He says it's great to see Sting again but he's not sure who AC Styles is. He reminds him that he doesn't belong in the ring with any of these guys. Sting retaliates on the mic putting AJ over massively. Luger still isn't sweating Styles and he's pretending to be scared. This is Luger's first match in around a year. He only had one match between this one and WCW closing, a match in Scotland for World Wrestling All-Stars beating Sting. Luger's first match action is sort of getting a ring rope pulled into his nutsack, but it doesn't look good. AJ and Sting almost put on stereo Scorpion Deathlocks, but the bad guys leave the ring. Luger enters the match against Styles and tries to intimidate him, flexing his pecs. AJ kicks him and tries a running attack, but it's like running into a brick wall. Lex flexes his pecs again with happiness. Styles still isn't having a good time against the total package and he gets a massive press slam. Lex isn't done overpowering Styles and he hits a big hip toss across the ring and Slapnuts congratulates him for it. 
Stars desperately tries to fight back with a springboard, but Luger catches him with a bear hug. Then he just dumps him to the floor. Slapnuts gets the tag again. He just boots Styles on the ribs and turns it back to Luger. The package boots and stomps on AC Styles. Luger flattens him with a clothesline and tags out again. AJ tries to snap off a Huracarana and tag Sting in, but Luger takes the ref and the tag doesn't count. AJ's bumping every ref for the narcissist. Luger lugs him out the ring like a cigarette butt out of a car window. Sting eventually has enough and he fights both the guys. He hits a scorpion death drop on Jarrett and Luger saves the pin. Lex hits a low blow to Sting and then he starts getting cocky again. Lex tries to torture Act but Sting escapes. AJ suddenly appears on the top rope and he hits a big cross body block but Luger kicks out. Lex is annoyed about this and he puts the torture rack on AJ. Sting rushes the ring again hitting him with a baseball bat and AJ rolls Lex up for the free. The commentary team shout that AJ can compete on their level. What are they on about? Did they watch a different match to us? AJ just got completely dominated and only won the match because Sting used a bat. Jarrett kills AJ after the match and says it's just him and Hogan now. It wasn't a bad match but Luger didn't have to do too much. It was mostly just slappy in styles. This wasn't actually the last of Luger in TNA but it was his last match. He reappeared in TNA three months later interfering in a table match between AJ Styles and Abyss. During a ref bump, Luger sauntered out to the ring. He press slammed AJ out of the ring through a table on the outside. He picks the referee up and points out that AJ has gone through the table. The award for biggest idiot ref of all time is now answered as he just agrees that AJ has lost the match. Luger then gets AJ back in the ring and gives him the torture rack. There is speculation after that Abyss, who's the sole tag team champion, is going to team up with Luger next week. It doesn't happen though and Lex isn't seen again. Why would Lex want to team up with him? What do they have in common? Over a year later, we got to see Lex again. Once again, he got involved with Slapnuts and Sting. There was a match scheduled pitting Steiner and Slapnuts against Sting and a mystery opponent. Sting told Slapnuts he was going to let him pick the partner. He was going to have to pick between the wrestlers hidden in the tunnel, Tunnel 1 or Tunnel 2. Jarrett refused to pick a tunnel and doesn't want to play any games. Sting says this means that the offer has been removed. He does say we're going to meet who they are anyway. Sting describes the mystery man behind Tunnel 1, former member of the NWO and a man who is currently on probation, and out walks Buff Bagwell who hasn't been seen in TNA for four years. I'm a six time world tag team champion and I just got beat by two gay guys. And you know what else I want to do right now? I want to go home. Jarrett seems like he doesn't know if he should laugh or cry. Jarrett calls him a top hat wearing moron. Sting says it's time to talk about Tunnel 2 and describes the guy as a multi-million pound bodybuilder and an international felon. Out walks Lex Luger who's dressed up all smart here. His head seems like it's started to shrink. The next week the same thing happens but there's only one tunnel. Jarrett chooses no deal but Sting reveals that it was Rick Steiner behind the tunnel. Sting eventually took the decision away and chose Samoa Joe instead as his partner. It seemed to be a good pick as they won in the end. Luger and Bagwell were back again a few months later. They randomly appeared at a press conference hyping Sting up for his match against Slapnuts at Bound for Glory 2006. They had a lot of kind words to say about the Stinger, but Lex never stepped foot in a TNA ring again. The final time Lex appeared in TNA was in 2012 when Sting was being inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame. Luger was here and said Sting was there for him after his motorcycle crash. They hug as their best friends. Luger does not look well here at all. This is after his serious health problems started, so that's probably why. So Lex was only ever in TNA to be used as a reminder that WCW was once a thing and that TNA pretty much wished it could be that. Yes, this was a really weird video to make. I don't know what happened. I do think from the look of him during that one match he wrestled, he could have had more to offer TNA. It was only a few months before this that Miss Elizabeth passed away from an overdose and Luger was getting into all sorts of legal problems. So that's most likely why he didn't stick around long in any of his appearances at TNA. I will end this one on a sad note. Due to all the health problems Lex has been through in the last few years, he's now wheelchair bound. I can't believe he went from this to this. Madness like a punch to the gut when you're about to nut.